On today's episode of P-Dubs Arcade Loft, we're going to take a look at that firmware fix that came out for the Arcade 1-Up Costco Super Pac-Man. Okay, Arcade 1-Up fans, when the Super Pac-Man edition that was available only in-store at Costco was released last year by Arcade 1-Up in around September, October 2020, uh, this cabinet was reviewed by myself. Thanks, as always, for everyone who watched that video. That video did really well, as well as other folks. And we identified some major issues, such as on the Galaga and Galaxian games. The button assignment, the fire button, was misassigned. It was placed on the left-hand side of the joystick, when traditionally, these games, that fire button belongs on the right-hand side of the joystick. Although it is possible to play the games in the configuration this was released at, that is not how these games were originally designed, and how this got past quality control is beyond me. Um, however, Arcade 1UP went ahead and back in October, late October, released a firmware update to fix this issue, to get the buttons on the correct side, as well as address the smoothing effect, the filtering effect, on the screens for all the games, as well as to give us dip switch settings for all the games. We finally had a chance to get this up and running, and uh, take a look at it. So I wanted to uh, put together a quick video for you guys on this. Obviously, what you want to do is you want to head over to the RK One Up website and head under Support, and you'll see where they have the software updates. You'll notice at the very bottom of the list is the is the October Super Pac-Man firmware update, as well as updates for other machines. If you own the Costco Super Pac-Man firmware update, I highly recommend that you guys do this update. It's actually a fairly simple update. There's only two things you need to download. There's a PDF document where you can download a PDF instruction booklet. There's also a YouTube video here you could watch, or you could just follow the steps in the video you're watching right now, um, as well as the actual files you need to download. First thing we're doing here is downloading the uh, PDF with the instructions. After that, we're going to download the actual firmware itself. As you can see in the bottom left corner, the firmware is a very small file, should take less than 30 seconds or so to download. It will come over as a zip file. I went ahead and I created a new folder on my desktop called Super Pac-Man, and I'm gonna head over to my downloads. You'll see that zip file that we downloaded over there. I'm gonna go ahead and open up this uh, folder that I, uh, whatchamacallit, that I just created on my desktop, and I'm just gonna move that zip file over to this folder on my desktop, that way I everything's nice and clean for me. And from here, you just need to right-click on it and head on down to 7-Zip or any other extraction tool you have, and click Extract here, and it'll extract the contents of the zip file and create a new folder. Okay, so now what we wanna do here, of course, is go into the Update tool, Super Pac-Man Updater, we want to go into the driver update and we want to click on the uh, driver install application. And then it's going to say right here, RK driver assistant, what do you want to do? We want to click on install driver. Then we get another window saying, would you like to install this device software? It's a install. And then it'll tell us that the install driver is okay. And then we can close our driver assistant. Now that um, we have finished that step, we can go back to our Super Pac-Man updater. And at this point, we want to click on the Super Pac-Man Updater application, and it'll open up another window. And now we, what we want to do here is we want to click on this box right here, and then we're going to find the bin file. We have to select Super Pac-Man Loader.bin and click Open. And then where it says the firmware, we want to click on that same far right box. We want to find the Super Pac-Man firmware, <laughs> click Open, and you'll see the uh, the file path names. The file path names for these will be right here. Now, at this point, you want to move over to the arcade machine. All right, make sure your laptop or your computer is adjacent to the arcade machine, and go ahead and unscrew 
the back board and get the back board taken off the device. With the back of the cabinet removed, go ahead and uh, unplug the power cable. And after the power cable is unplugged, then go to the PCB board to the toggle switch and flick that little black toggle switch into the up direction. The up direction is off. You want to make sure that that toggle switch is pointed upwards towards off. At this point, grab a micro USB to USB A cable and plug it into the PCB board. Probably have an old cell phone cable like this laying around. Take the other end of the cable and plug it into your PC or your laptop. Once you connect that cable to your PC or laptop, it'll send power to the PCB board even though the device is unplugged from its uh, AC adapter. And you'll notice it now says found one mask ROM device on the bottom. So it is connected to your machine. Previously, it said no device found. And at this point, you can move over and click run and let it run. It'll go ahead and flash the firmware for you. As you guys can see, it is very, very fast. It'll get done super quick. When it's finished, and it literally, it took less than a minute, guys. When it's finished, you'll see on the bottom right of the column, it does say download Super Pac-Man firmware 100%, download image okay. That's right, guys, you're done. You went ahead and you flashed the firmware. You can head on over to the back of the Pac-Man cabinet and go ahead and remove that micro USB cable. And make sure that that toggle switch on the back of the PCB board is flipped back down towards the on position. At this point, you could go ahead and reconnect your power cable to the PCB board, screw in the back of your cabinet, fire this thing up, and check it out. And of course, the moment of truth is upon you when you hit that power switch, see the marquee light up, and then see the games load and the system fire up that you did everything correctly. You'll notice a brand new feature on the bottom of the screen that wasn't there before. We do have settings. We can get into the dip switch settings for these games. Whatever game you have highlighted, you do have to go game by game. It's not a universal setting. Whatever game you have highlighted, you just hit the player two start button on it and it'll enter the dip switch settings menu. All of the games have their own dip switch settings where you can adjust the initial lives, bonus live points, the difficulty levels of the game, as well as taking away that pixel smoothing effect, which is much needed on every game on this system. Make sure you guys turn that pixel smoothing off. I'll show you some examples here shortly, but lots of really cool options for every game. Good job, Arcade 1UP. And then of course, hit that button to save and exit. To give you an example of how good the smoothing effect turning off is gonna look on these games, let's go ahead and fire this game up without the smoothing effect adjusted. Uh, so we still have this smoothing effect on, as you can see here. The games are a little bit blurry. All the games on the system, everything's been smoothed over. It's not as pixelated or as sharp looking as uh, these games look on other Arcade 1UP units, especially like the original Wave 1 Pac-Man and Wave 1 Galaga. Like for instance here, when we zoom in on the wording, you'll notice here that everything is smooth. Look at that power word. It's a very smooth font. But that's not the way this game was designed. And as we enter the game, you'll notice that the logo itself has been smoothed over. And then of course, all the characters, the edging, everything looks like it's got a layer of Vaseline on the screen. It's not the way it should normally look. But if we go into the same game, uh, into Super Pac-Man and turn that pixel smoothing off, right there, make sure we flip that to the off position. If we turn that off, save and exit, and relaunch the game, you're gonna notice a huge difference. Might be hard for this camera to pick up, but you will definitely notice the difference in person. You'll notice that the characters, the fonts, everything looks more pixelated, much like how these look on, you know, I mean, I know Super Pac-Man wasn't a Wave 1 cabinet, but regular Pac-Man, Galaga, all that smoothing has gone away these games now match the way they looked on those Wave 1 cabinets. Look at the pixelation on the words Power and Super. It's not all smoothed over. No longer looks like we have Vaseline smeared all over the screen. So all games, I checked them all, all the games look so much better and they look fantastic with that filter removed. I mean, as you can see here in game, you can actually see the pixelation on the edges of the borders of the of the map on the table where you're, you know, mo moving your Pac-Man characters. Everything looks great. The apples actually have the jagged edges on the apples. It's awesome. That's what these games should have looked like. 
And of course, the biggest concern I had in my original review was the fact that the buttons were mapped incorrectly for Galga and Galaxian. And you'll notice when you fire up both of those games now on the new firmware, they have added fire buttons to both sides. So, hey, if you want to play with that left-hand button, you can. But guess what? For the enthusiasts like myself, we can play these games the way they were originally designed with the fire button on the right-hand side of the joystick. Oh, yeah. And, of course, turning that pixel smoothing off on Galaga and Galaxy, and these games look amazing. They look just like... Uh, the way they did on that Wave 1 Galaga cabinet. They don't look all smeared up and blurry, etc. Do I need to go to the eye doctor? Blah, blah, blah. And of course, as you can see here, I'm testing both sides of the joystick, and it works just fine with the fire button. One last example for you guys on these smoothing effects. As you can see here, this is Pac-Land with that smoothing filter, that pixel smoothing filter put on the device. This is what the game looks like. And here is the exact same game with the pixel smoothing turned off and it looks just like how the original game looked or how the original game was intended to look. Such a huge improvement. I love this firmware update. I remember when I did my original review for this cabinet, I said if Arcade 1UP can release a firmware fix for this cabinet, it would be a solid 8 out of 10. <coughs> Without the firmware fix, this cabinet was a do not buy. And with that firmware fix in, this is a solid 8 out of 10 cabinet. Wonderful cabinet to add to your collection. Fantastic lineup of Pac-Man, Bandai, Namco games. You guys are really going to like this cabinet. Um, and of course, hats off to Arcade 1UP for putting out a firmware fix. That does work, and it does work well. Can't find any issues with it. Love everything that I'm seeing here. All the different changes and options and things like that. Dip switch settings are huge. My only concern, of course, is I had to drag this thing into my office, to my PC. Um, and folks, this is why we got to have Wi-Fi on these machines. I mean, I hate to say it, but, you know, I know I'm beating a dead horse, but if these machines were Wi-Fi capable, there's a good chance we could have got a firmware update via Wi-Fi. And, and this would have been done, bing, 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 boom, 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 easy peasy. Um, so hopefully Arcade 1UP will consider continuing to add Wi-Fi to their cabinets moving forward for stuff like this because the process although simple did take you know 30 30 minutes out of my life when it could have taken a three minute firmware update that's my only critique is i wish all these machines were connected but you guys know how i am i love multi -cades. anyway guys that's it let me know what you think are you gonna do the update have you done the update give us a thumbs up on the way out and thank you for subscribing